everybody out there. It's Pastor Beverly, the children's pastor at Harvest Christian Center. I'm so glad that y'all can be with us. Can you gather up all your family and friends and come join me for a little bit of Bible study today? And to all of those who are not members of Harvest Christian Center, we welcome you. Thank you for being with us today. Well, the last few weeks here at Harvest, what we've been uh, studying about has been about faith. And the per people that we've been studying about faith is Sarah and Abraham. Well, a little background on, on them. You know, Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100 when they had their son, which was a promise from God. They had faith that God will provide them with a son and that and so that was one form of faith later on about your age God went to Abraham and said that he wanted him to sacrifice him now Abraham loves his son now was he going to do that Yes, because he had faith that God would provide a sacrifice. So he gathered him up and with two servants and put some wood on a donkey, and they went up the mountain to build an altar. And he told his servants before he left for them to wait here, and we will return. Now, that's faith, because he was trusting God to provide a sacrifice. And lo and behold, what did he do? He provided a lamb. As he was getting ready to sacrifice his son, God told him to stop, and there, by faith, was a sacrificial lamb caught in the thicket. And so they returned with faith. Faith. Now, the Bible gives us lots of examples of faith, of people who have faith. But... What the Bible says about Abraham is, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. And he did not waver through unbelieving regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened by his faith and gave glory to God that God had the power to do what he had promised. That's in Romans 4. 1821. I just want you to think about that for a minute. Promise. Did God give us a promise? Hmm. Think about that. God gives us promises, and we have to have faith that they would come through, right? Well, what is the faith of promise that God gave us? Jesus. Yes. Jesus Christ. He promised that he would send a Savior, didn't he? And we have faith that Jesus did come and save us from our sins, didn't he? And he made a promise to us that when he was sacrificed that he was coming back. And what was his promise for us for coming back? To save us from our sins and so that we can go to heaven and be with him. Faith is believing that God will do what he has promised or believing what he can do. Sometimes we have to ask him for, in other words, faith is believing God for something specific. Our faith is t tied to hope. Confident, be confident belief that God will do what he what we expect him to do hope comes from the heart looks forward to seeing what god is doing or how he's going to do it we do, we expect god to do what we ask don't we what are some of the things that you ask god to, to do for you and expect him to do it Huh? Is it to have ice cream for dessert at night? Is it to what? Make somebody well? Is it to help you on a test that you're taking in school? 
faith that God will help us through all circumstances that we're going through, whether it be with family, friends, or just in our community. God is right there with us, always. Because we can trust in him. Trusting God is holding on, on when we do not know what God's plan is. And then we don't, and if we don't understand what's happening, sometimes you don't even know what to pray for. That's when you hold on to the fact that God loves you and cares for you and that he has everything under control. Sometimes our lives are just going in 50 miles an hour, going this direction and that direction. But remember that God is with you no matter what you're going through. And how we go through it with God is him holding on to us. It's really amazing. When we go to our superhero chapter, remember what that is? That is in Hebrews 11, all those superheroes that's in there, talks about their faith. And what do they talk about in our faith? Don't forget your book. Got your Bibles handy? It says in chapter 11, verse 6, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Uh Uh-oh. Who wants a reward? I like rewards, don't you? We need to have faith, it says, in God. And he's going to reward us. What is our reward? Everlasting life with Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? I think that's fantastic. What about you? We want a reward. It's coming to, going to be with us. It's trusting in him that he is going to be there and that we're going to have a reward. Trust. That's a big thing, isn't it? How about when we see a chair? We look at the chair, and we trust that that chair is strong enough to hold us, that when we sit on that chair, that it is reliable. Every time we go to use it, we have confidence in that chair. That's what it's like with our everyday faith with God. We have the faith that he would be with us. We have confidence of what he has done, that he will hold us at all times. Whatever we're going through in all situations, God is with us. We have faith in that. But there are some times when we really need more faith than just our everyday trust. Sometimes things get a little bit hard, and it, it's like a struggle. You don't understand why it's happening. But you need to know that God is with you. Have that faith. It's like putting on a blindfold and letting your friends guide you to a chair to sit on. Being blinded. You can't see it, but you're trusting that that friend will guide you to a safe place, right? That's what God is doing for us. He's guiding us to a safe place, and we trust in him, and that we're putting our trust in God, and that which is faith. Now, what do we realize about faith? Well, let's talk about that. A little bit about what God told, what Jesus told Thomas about seeking faith. Remember Thomas? He he kind of was the he doubted that Jesus had come back to life, but that's not what um, the, Jesus came to him to show him that his marks on his hands that he was really alive and had come back. Jesus told Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who do not see and yet have believed. Blessings 
of knowing that Jesus is with us. Can we see him today? No, but we do. We believe that he is with us all the time. That's having faith. We believe in our love for him will get us through any situation that we're going through. Okay. How can I attain this faith, all right? Well, it's really, really easy. You need to talk to God and tell him what's going on in your life. Stay close to him. Now, do you have to go on your knees by your bed every time you want to talk to God? No. You can be walking down the street thanking God for the beautiful sunshine, for your bike, for going to a park, for their friends, being able to talk to them on the phone, for even having a phone. Isn't that wonderful? For all situations that we're going through, God wants to hear from us. He wants to know what's going on in our lives. So in John 15, 7, says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. We need to be diligent in asking God. Have faith that he, will keep, that he is keeping his promise to us, that he loves us so much and that we love him, that he's keeping us. Number two, notice the things that God is doing in our lives and the way he helps us. Also, remembering to thank him for the things that he has done for, for us in the past and what he's going to do for us in the future. It's so easy for us to go to God to ask, can you help me with this? Can you help me with a test? Can you help me... Mend the friendship with my friend. Can you help me? Sometimes we forget to say thank you for all the wonderful things that he's done for us. Like for the broccoli on our plate. I know, some of you don't like broccoli, but I love broccoli. And then thank you for the hamburger, the ice cream. Thank you for the friends that we have. Thank you for being able to go outside and play. And that God wants to hear all those things, and he wants us to thank him for all of that. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. So we need to be diligent. We need to thank God. It's in his word. It's telling us that we should be thankful for it. And to pray as we're walking down the street, as we're sitting on the couch watching TV, have God's faith with us all the time. And number three, faith comes from reading and believing in the Bible. Ooh, how many of you out there read your Bible? Ah, yeah. Do you know God's word comes alive when we read it? It grows inside us. He wants us to hear what he has for us. And the way we hear from God is by reading his word. As you read about God, you will get to know him better, and your faith in him will grow too. Don't we like to grow with Jesus? We like to grow and learn things. How to ride a bike. How to bake a cake. That all comes from learning. And Jesus wants us to learn. And in Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Having faith in Jesus Christ, having faith in his word, that he is with us now and forever. So I want to thank you for being with me. 
have faith that God is with you, that he has seen you through anything and everything that you're going through. And talk to him. Tell him what's on your heart. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know the good things, and he wants to know the bad things. He wants to take you in his arms and hold you. Have faith that God is hanging on to you every minute of every day. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that I could be together with the, with the children through the, through the airways, dear Lord. I ask that you be with each one of the children, that you keep them safe, that you put your arms around them, that they come to you, they open their Bibles, and they learn what you have them to learn, dear Jesus. Just bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.